In the run-up to Dreamforce 2021, Salesforce announced new capabilities for Einstein Automate. Joining me to talk about how Salesforce sees automation and AI transforming and actually humanizing customer service is Clara Shai, CEO of Service Cloud at Salesforce. Clara, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk automation, um, AI, RPA, um, and how that relates or, uh, to the service cloud and how that's kind of changing how organizations uh, approach their, um, their interactions with their customers. Because I know that automation um, is a large part of many organizations' digital transformation processes. So I guess maybe start with how are automation and AI in the companies that you talk to and in Salesforce's customers, how are they using it to really um, provide service uh, to their customers? You know, this is such an this is such a pivotal time for customer service right now. If you think about the major forces that are top of mind for every C-level executive team, right? Number one is customer experience and customers wanting faster answers. They want to self-service. They want to use the digital channels of their choice. Um, another trend around automation. And the third is, you know, if, if the easy tasks are going to go to bots and automation, what's the future of the workforce? And how do we continuously upskill our service agents and our field techs? And so it's really exciting to be in this world right now because it really, Service Cloud is at the epicenter of these three major market trends. Yeah, and so I, I'd love to drill down on that part of, do you see a certain segment or processes, I guess, segment of the process of, of that interaction um, more ripe for automation and uh, using AI as part of that process than others. So I guess, what are some things that organizations, especially service organizations, um, are automating? Like what types of processes are, are being automated right now? It's such a good question. I mean, the thing with automation and AI is that it can apply to so many different areas that it can, it's sometimes it's hard to, to wrap your head around it. Um, so I'll just share at Service Cloud, you know, the way that we approach our Einstein AI and automation is we have three pillars. The first is full automation, looking for repeat processes, looking for manual steps. And, and our new Service Cloud RPA is, an, is a great example of that, right? Instead of an agent opening a legacy application waiting for the system to load up and looking up a piece of data, all of that can happen pretty much instantaneously with full automation. And also what we're doing with Einstein Automate, which is part of our Salesforce platform built into Service Cloud, right? with just a few clicks, no coding required, any business analyst, anyone at a company can create a full end-to-end -end automation story. So that's the first pillar is, is a full automation. The second is when you want a human in the loop. And this is what we call an assistance scenario. So if you're sitting inside of a contact center and you're talking to a customer, you're not fully automating the customer interaction, but there's manual steps that previously maybe the agent had to type in a bunch of, of text to look something up. Now we can do it for them. And this is a great example, um, service cloud voice. But as the customer is explaining her problem to the agent, and so the agent frantically typing that in, Service Cloud Voice is listening. It's bringing, you know, like what we would have at home with Siri or Alexa, it's bringing in that into the workplace so that the agent can focus on building connection with a customer and frankly, solving the issue much, much faster and driving kind of the suggested next best actions. Um, or if you look across at an organization, what we're doing now with incident management and swarming between Service Cloud and Slack. Instead of, you know, if you're an insurance company and there, a natural disaster strikes, instead of some, instead of, of manually creating a phone tree, which is highly inefficient, and you're sharing a lot of the same message over and over again, we use assistance to help spin up the right set of experts from across the company. And they could be spread out across the country, they could be spread out across multiple countries, you've got claim, claims adjusters in the field, you've got your catastrophe teams, you've got your executives at HQ who are very eager to understand the damages and how to make sure that we get people safely evacuated into temporary housing. So all of that can happen through an assist scenario. 
And then the third pillar that we talk about for AI and automation is optimizing. How do we help every service organization, every company continuously improve using all of this data that we have, whether it's from conversations or agent behaviors and workflows? And I'll give you an example there. Every call center struggles with the volume and unpredictability of calls that flood in. And as consumers, we experience this, right? When we are put on hold for many minutes or even hours, it's because the call center is feeling overwhelmed. Well, with our new Einstein conversation uh, mining, we're able to listen to all of the reasons why callers are calling in and identify which of those really should have been self-service opportunities. And recently, you know, in a, a large organization that we work with, one of the largest contact centers in the US, through working with them, we found that a lot of customers were calling in just to update their mailing address. That's not a good reason to call in. The customer doesn't want to call in for that reason. The company doesn't think that's a good reason. And so by being able to optimize and analyze that data, we we're able to identify that use case. And then the company with, again, a few clicks, they were able to expose updating your address in their mobile app, on their website, through their bots, so that customers going forward, if they wanted to, they wouldn't have to call in for that reason. And so those are the three things that automation, um, assistance, and optimization. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really interesting. So, and it leads me to my next question, which is, you know, I guess there are a lot of, um, you know, what customer expectations and customer needs are constantly changing. Um, and, and there was a time, I guess, when people wanted to talk to a live person for most things, or maybe that was just the way we were accustomed to doing things. And that's shifted now for people to be able to do things in a much more um, self-service manner. And so I think that's a good, that's a good example of that. I'm wondering if, um, if you can kind of expand on, on that part of it, are there, um, and talk a little bit about how automation is maybe key to companies addressing those changing customer needs. So, you, and I guess, you know, you've, you, you've given a great example of that, but I'm thinking about it in general. Like, is automation the only way, basically, to react quickly enough these days to needs that are kind of changing in the future? You know, we don't have years to make changes. We don't have decades to make changes like maybe we used to. And, and do you think automation is, the, is key to companies being able to react quickly enough to their customers to provide that really good experience that they want? That is such an interesting question. I, I think the answer is yes, just because customer expectations and frankly, employee expectations are sky high. And you're right, there's still plenty of instances and plenty of customers who do want to call in and talk to someone, right? There's more complex issues or, you know, in financial services, if, some, if someone's relative loved one has just passed away, that's not something that they want to most of the time self-service through. They want to be talked through that process. But I think that's the power of automation is taking the repeat, the, the non-strategic repeat tasks and freeing your workforce to focus on those higher touch, proactive, more complex issues. So let's touch on that. That, that actually is a perfect segue to even my next question, which is, you know, one of the criticisms that you see of robotics, RPA automation, is that it either dehumanizes the experience but it also eliminates jobs from the workforce. Um, so from what I hear you, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people, um, and, and they're trying to say that, you know, their position is that automation is augmenting uh, the workforce, and it has the potential to do exactly what you just said, which is free up agents who used to handle the repetitive tasks to handle more complex or specialized tasks. Um, if that's the case, how do companies or how do the customers that you see um, who are doing it successfully, what's their secret to doing that successfully? Because, you know, like you said, the last thing that some customers want to do is talk to a bot when they're dealing with um, a, a very complex issue. It's so true. I, I think let's talk about the pitfalls, right? So a pitfall might be to push too many things to self-service or not offer an option to have high touch. Right, a, a recent example, I was just with a, a customer 
in the insurance space where, you know, when someone, when their house, when someone's house burns down, they don't want to talk to a bot. They want to be comforted. They want to talk to a human being, right? You could build a bot, but just the data shows most of the time, that's not what the customer needs at that moment. And so being really hyper aware of that customer experience, of that customer needs state, and making sure that you offer choice, but also have empathy in how you guide the channel and the right agent to do the job. The second pitfall that I see is that um, companies don't provide the continuous upskilling for their human agents. Right? I think that's a, like pretty common in the customer, at least in the contact center industry, where agents are almost, you know, it's a high turnover business and agents kind of cycle in and out. And we really have to shift our mindset as an industry from viewing agents as kind of fungible, interchangeable to really viewing them as a, a workforce, an intelligent workforce that deserves investment in these AI assistance tools and deserves ongoing training opportunities. And that's, I'm really proud of you know, a couple of things that we've done here, both our, our new workforce engagement management solution has personalized training built in. And so instead of subjecting all 10,000 people in our contact center to the same eight hours of, of grueling training, it can be really targeted. And I might identify that you need training in one particular area and that I might need training in a completely different set of areas. And we can, we can each be on our journey and upskill over time. And frankly, we can earn more over time as we could become more skilled in more areas. Is that a hard argument uh, for you to make to companies who have seen, you know, and I will cop to being a help desk way back decades ago when I started in IT, I worked help desk. I worked in a call center. Luckily, I didn't do external support. I did internal support. But, you know, so I, I feel that kind of frustration um, of a lot of people who are CSRs and, um, you know, of, 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 of and, and I'm curious if you think that that's a hard argument to make to organizations that for a very long time have seen that workforce as very transitory, as fungible, as not really, you know, um, not really investing in the growth in that workforce, or maybe investing in one or two people to be a team lead or a, a, a manager or, or something like that. But they, there's not really a defined career path. I mean, it, it, have you found when you make that argument, which I think is an excellent one and, and should be made, um, do you find that, that, that people listen, that forward-thinking companies really do want to do that and see the value in that? I've seen the conversations shift dramatically in the last 12 months, right? Contact centers and, and retail companies, it's a tight labor market. It's hard to hire people and it's, it's become imperative, therefore, to retain the workforce that you have. And so I think the mindset has completely shifted. And we saw this happen in, in, in a lot of um, office jobs too before where you know, we went from you know, viewing people that way to realizing that everyone, everyone can have a growth mindset. And companies and leadership need to encourage that. We're seeing that same thought process permeate the contact center in this, in this labor market. And also as companies realize that it's more important than ever to service their customers because that's how you drive that ongoing loyal relationship and growth. Yeah, and, and, and I, I take it that, you know, that is the key part that what every company should really strive for is to have, if you have engaged employees, they're going to provide an engaged and uh, a good customer experience as well, right? That's what all of the data shows. And, and we experience it, right? You you can tell as a consumer when you call into a contact center and someone is just, they're just mailing it in, they're doing their job, it's transactional, they know that they might not work there the next week or the next month versus someone who really cares and someone who is, it's almost like a brand ambassador for the company. And it just leaves you with a complete night and day, different feeling in terms of how you want to continue your relationship with that, that company. And automation, I guess, I mean, is a, is a place to kind of round it up. It sounds like building those automation um, uh, processes and tools and giving, um, giving companies the ability to build that into the process, um, into their processes is key to making that transition to, a, to humanizing both the interaction with the customer, but also changing the career trajectory for those agents. It's right. That's right. It's it's a it's a real career moment for those agents. And then we have to be 
extremely careful, as you said, right? Technology is, is a powerful, it can be used in powerfully dehumanizing ways if we're not careful. And so that's why I'm also really proud of, of our, our design ethics team and just really putting that agent human experience at the heart of what we do um, and making sure that it doesn't, you know, I've heard some technologies out there that contact centers are using, especially with agents working from home where it sounds like big brother. That's not the best way to get the most out of your workforce and to build trust. And so we believe we have a highly ethical, humane way where we're trusting our people, we're, we're holding them accountable, but we're treating them with dignity and respect. And as you said, that is how you, you end up delivering an excellent customer experience at the end of the day, because those agents feel empowered, they feel trusted, and they feel loyal to the company. Well, I couldn't think of a better point to uh, end our conversation on. Clara, again, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Thank you.